What do you carry? It's so precious, man. Like you're carrying the presence of the living God and you have to carry it a certain way. This isn't just move on my behalf. This isn't just let me lay hands on you and you'll be healed. This isn't just, hey, you want to see a miracle? Hey, you want to see a leg grow out? Hey, you want to see? Hey, how about we honor this thing, man? How about we take care of it like a child, right? If you're pregnant, you're not going to go certain places. If you're pregnant, you're not going to smoke. If you're pregnant, you're not going to drink. If you're pregnant, you're going to talk because it's a baby listening, right? And then as a, as a person in Christ, you're learning to birth that. That's called the Son of God. And you're becoming that because it's growing on the inside of you. And it's crying out. And it's now coming out. And now you get to walk that out, right? And as Christians, a lot of us are walking out carnal Christianity because they're immature. So they're walking out the flesh instead of the Christ. And our job is to teach them to walk out who they are in Christ and train them up. Because what's inside of them is holy. Guys, what's inside, whoo, what's inside of Christians is holy. It's holy, man. This thing is holy. This isn't just a move. It's inside of every born again believer. And it's holy and it's precious. And we're going around bashing each other, man, and fighting each other and talking trash on the Christ that's inside of them, the baby who's trying to come out. And we're bashing it with carnality and telling it to stay in the manger. We don't want it to come out, right? And this thing's holy. And what happens when you understand that what you're carrying is holy? And what happens? Oh my gosh. That means I'm holy now. That means where I go becomes holy, right? Oh man, I'm walking out a holy life now. Why? Because what I have is holy and I recognize it's holy. And now when I say holy, 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 I understand what that means. Yeah. Oh my gosh, God, you're holy. And now you're inside of me and this thing's holy. And like my whole life is holy. Like what does this even mean? It means you get to walk out what holiness looks like. What's it look like? It looks like Jesus. Yeah. Looks like Jesus. But let's talk about doctrine for a minute. Right? That's crazy to me. Don't you guys want to walk that out? Man, what would that feel like to wake up in the morning and feel the holiness of God like flowing through you, man, through your kids, through your family, right? Your reality. What does that feel like to know that what's inside of you has fought teeth and nail to get inside of you? Amen. Do you not know that? That's crazy to me. David, man, oh, David said, Renew in me a new heart, O Lord. You guys remember that? Yeah. The Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart. He's the guy that took off the robe and danced. And the, he danced and Micah teased him. David represents a lot of things. Okay? David, he was out in the field. And if you know this, his dad was Jesse. Right? And Samuel came to him and he said, present your sons. And I don't know if you know this or not, but David was not there. Which means he was hiding him. Which pretty much proves that he was probably born out of wedlock. He was probably hiding him, had him in the field. Didn't even claim him as his son. Because a man of God said, present your sons, and he wasn't there. Which means that he did not claim him as a son. And Jesse said, and uh, Samuel said, we're not sitting down until he gets here. It could have been days. He said, we're not sitting down until he gets here. Right? And then he comes. And if you know this, right? David never wanted to be king. If you read the Psalms, man, he always wanted a dad. He always wanted a God. He always wanted a father. He wanted that figure in his life that he never had because he was out in the field all the time. And he was watching the sheep, and this is who God picked. Saul was a, a, a donkey herder. If you read it, he herded donkeys. They were stubborn mules. And it's talking about, hey, the reason that we got Saul as a king is because Israel's is stubborn. And we're going to put you there and show you. And that's what that's about. You're stubborn. You're going to do it your way, right? And so here's Dave, who's like fighting for the sheep, right? And killing the lion and the bear. And then they call him, they make him king, right? He didn't want to be king. He never asked for that. He just wanted to be son. And then there's that saying, right? It says that Dave was a man after God's own heart. And what's God's heart? God's heart is that you be a son, right? So David was crying out to be born again. And he couldn't even have it. He couldn't even have it when he said, renew me a new heart. The scriptures say, uh, uh, you'll turn my heart in, you'll take my heart of stone and give me a heart of flesh, and you write your your laws in my heart and my mind, and you give and you place your spirit within me. 
David was asking, make me a son. Give me your spirit. I want to be your son. I want your spirit inside of me. Please don't take your spirit from me. And all we have to do as Christians is say, yes, Jesus. Yes. And we get that. Amen. David was being tormented because he couldn't have it. Yeah. And now we just say, hey, yeah, okay. And we give it to people like it's just cheese. We just give it to people like it's just cheese. Hey, do you want this Jesus? Do you want this cheese? Just just say yeah, and you can have it on your cracker right now. Here, just here, eat it. It's, it's delicious. Here, it's so good. And then you walk away with this cheese, and it becomes rotten. We don't give them life. We don't give them bread. We don't give them who Jesus is. We give them this idea and this thought of we're going somewhere. No, man, you got something holy inside of you, and we're walking it out. And that's what all this is about. That's why I'm here. That's why we're here, right? And I know you probably want to hear it, but, man, that's the gospel. The gospel is that God became everything he hated. God became everything he hated. Now, I have people argue with me about that. God became everything he hated. And what does he hate more than anything? Sin. And the Bible says that Jesus became sin. So you're telling me that God became everything he hated and then he killed it on the cross so he wouldn't have to look at it when he looked at you? That's huge, man. That's huge that God would become everything he hated and he let you put all his wrath on him that you would beat him and destroy everything that he is. It's crazy because What's the worst thing that a man can do? What's the worst sin a man can commit? You guys know what it is? Worse than that. There's a sin worse than that. We don't ever talk about it. It's the act of killing God. And we did that. And what did he say? That's our God. Our God said, I'm going to come down there and I'm going to let you give me your worst. You're going to beat me. You're going to hit me. You're going to hate me. You're going to just, you're not going to be able to stand me. You're going to give me everything you have. I'm going to let you kill me. I'm going to let you break me. And I'm going to come back and I'm going to look at you right in the face and say, are you done yet? I love you. I love you. You killed me. And I didn't care. And I'm still here. Now what? You come to the end of yourself yet? You ready? That's the gospel. That's mind-boggling to me. That a God would do that. That's crazy. A God that would come, ask for sacrifice and then become one. For me. Just so he could live in me. That's even crazier. I'm going to come down here. I'm going to get beat. I'm going to get, you know, humiliated. No one's going to believe me. I'm going to do everything that God says. You're going to reject me. Then I'm going to die the worst death I can possibly die. And then I'm going to move into you even though you did that to me. That's crazy to me. That's insane. You want to talk about an enemy? Oh, we're all enemies of God? Yeah, but you know what? I want to live in you. I want to live in you. That's crazy. You want to kill your enemies. You don't want to live in them and bless them. That's crazy. That's insane, man. That's insane. Sweet Jesus. What do you do with that reality? That doesn't drive you crazy. That drives somebody crazy. You guys know the story of Abraham? We don't ever talk about Isaac. Did you know Isaac was a grown man? Did you guys know that? You know, you see the pictures of Isaac, he's a little kid. He's not, he's a grown man. The Bible says that the sacrifice, the sacrificial wood was on two mules. Two mules, that's a lot of wood. Then they only went so far, and the mules couldn't carry it, so who had to carry it? Isaac. Isaac's a grown man. Carried all that. And that's the image of Jesus carrying the sacrificial wood, which is the cross. And he carried it up, and he laid it down. And he was being obedient to the Father, and the Father said, lay down. Lay your life down. And Isaac said, okay, I'll do it. I'll lay my life down for you. That's Jesus. Ain't that crazy? That's you. That's me. That's all of us supposed to lay our lives down. We lay the flesh down. We lay the old man down. Amen. I'm just preaching now, but man, I'm sorry. Amen. Good stuff. Preach. Thank you. Guys, this is the gospel. This is why we lay hands on the sick, man. Because the love of God is powerful. Powerful when you understand the love of God. Did you guys know that when Adam was created, he was naked? And he wasn't ashamed. You guys know that? And did you know that when they fell, he was ashamed they covered him? Because they were ashamed, so they covered themselves. 
Did you know that when Jesus died on the cross, he was butt naked? He had no clothes on. You guys know that? I know you see the paintings, but he's naked. He's completely naked. He left this world the same way he came in, but he wasn't ashamed. He was not ashamed. Whew. He wore us. He wore us, and he was not ashamed. He wore us, like he put us on. And he took all his clothes off, and he was like, man, like, what do you do with that? What do you do with that, that he's naked on the cross, he's not ashamed? And he's like, he became everything we were so we could become everything he is. So he became everything that we were and then died on the cross. And he was not ashamed of what we were. That's heavy. And what's even crazier is that under the law, you can't even look at a naked man. It's, it's sinful. Which means that every Jewish person under the law had to turn their backs on Jesus at that moment. But everyone that looked at him was a Gentile. Because they were not under the law. Give that some thought. The law will always keep you from seeing Jesus if you don't have the heart of God. That's what all that's about. The law was always to reveal the heart of Jesus and the heart of Jesus is to look at that man's shame and not to be ashamed, but to be there for that man. And the only ones that were there was John and the two Marys. And Jesus said, this is your mother now. Gave his mother to John because John was the only one the only one that looked at his naked body. The only one. That's why John didn't die. He's the only one that didn't die. Did you know that? You know why he didn't die? Because he saw Jesus on the cross. That's why he didn't die. Everybody else was martyred. That's what I mean by dying. He was the only one that was not martyred. He's the only one that they burned him in oil and he survived. He was on an island. He didn't die because he looked at the face of Jesus on the cross. That's what all that's about.